entering the free speech zone. Here's your host, Eric Barnard. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Free Speech Zone. I am your host, Eric Barnard. We are coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, from the studios of Atlanta Podcast Recording. We have a very special guest here today. Uh, Joining us via phone is the one and only, the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock, UFC Hall of Famer, former NWA champion, the 1998 King of the Ring, former WWE Intercontinental Champion. He is here to talk to us about his newest venture, Valor Bare Knuckle Boxing. Valor Bare Knuckle Boxing's first pay-per-view will be coming to you on September 21st from the Four Bear Casino in uh, South Dakota. That event is available on pay-per-view. will also be available on Fight TV. So to all your fans out there, go out there and watch this event. It's going to be great. It's only $29.95, plus taxes and fees may apply from wherever you're living at. And also, be sure, if you don't know anything about Ken Shamrock, there's a great book you all need to go pick up. It's called Inside the Lion's Den, The Life and Submission Fighting System of Ken Shamrock. You can still find it available on places like Amazon. So remember, the book is Inside the Lions Den, the life and submission fighting style of Ken Shamrock. Great person. So it's great to have Ken here with us, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this adventure and get his uh, thoughts on some other big issues in the world of combat sports. We're going to talk safety. We're going to talk about transgender fighters. We're going to talk about uh, what his thoughts are on many of his old opponents and talk about what um, uh, he sees Valor BK becoming. So thank you all for being here and uh, enjoy the show. So, uh, Ken, let me um, uh, start off this with uh, Valor um, uh, Bare Knuckle. Uh, what was your motivation for uh, when you start this promotion and uh, bring Bare Knuckle mainstream? Well, I mean, it was back in the day when I first started doing the whole bar. It was Bare Knuckle. And I remember um, walking out the arena and watching a fight, the first fight, and it was Bare Knuckle. And it was just, I mean, it was intense. Like, they're really doing this. I mean, it's Bare Knuckle. And, uh, you know, this is back in, what, 93? Yeah, 93, Bare Knuckle. And I was, like, so excited. I get in and I have my fight. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, a couple shows later, this guy Tank App comes out, and he's got gloves on, and he starts knocking people out with this glove on. And, uh, you know, uh, we like, well, what's that? And so the organization said, well, that's a great idea. We could put gloves on these guys and we'll, we'll pitch it as being safer. And the reality of it is it wasn't about being safe. It was about bringing back the guys that were winning. Obviously, that's who the people want to see. And so the guys were getting knocked down and guys were getting their hands protected. See, because you were able to throw punches and be able to land it anywhere on the head. Right. And you wouldn't hurt your hand. So, um, here comes this this world of a $4 billion industry that was sold as a bill of rights that it was safer. And the reality of it is it isn't true because I remember when I put gloves on, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Maybe it's safer. And I started throwing punches. And then I realized real quick, like, wow, this is cheating. So it felt like it to me because I didn't have to be very accurate with my punches. And it took away really any purity of being able to choke somebody or be able to do leg locks because you had a glove on right. and it was easy to get out of those things, right? So sure. I thought to myself, wow, this is not right. This isn't pure. This isn't God-given talent. This is basically cheating. And I, it felt like to me, I realize it's not. It's what it is. But it just felt that way to me. And I felt like taking the gloves off was more pure and more real. And so I told myself if I ever got the opportunity – that I was going to bring it back or fight back in it. Uh, obviously, it never came back. Uh, but now I have the opportunity to be able to bring it back as a president, a uh, promoter of Valor BK Bare Knuckle. But I don't want to just bring it back, and I don't want to just throw it out there in front of people and and uh, and put on a show just to put on a show. I want to bring it back because I think it is what it it should be and put up with the combat sports as something very professional and respectable. And uh, being able to educate the people along the way at what Bare Knuckle is, is is really our responsibility as a professional organization to have people understand what Bare Knuckle is so they can understand it and be able to enjoy it more. Sure, I got gotcha. Well, it's it, this is definitely a change. Are you um, uh, hoping that this is going to become something that's going to be a rival to uh, to the UFC and other combat sports? Um, is, that your, is that your ultimate goal here, is to be a competitor with UFC? No, I think what it is, uh, it's about being able to bring something different. Like in the early days when you had kickboxer against boxer and and wrestler against a boxer, it's it's its own thing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you saw Malinaji step in there and and fight uh, somebody that didn't have the boxing experience that Malinaji did, and Malinaji lost. So bare knuckle is different, right? So what you ask yourself is, 
is is bare knuckle. Uh, how different is it for an MMA fighter or for a boxer or for a kickboxer or even for a pro wrestler? It really is so new that anybody right now can go in and fight because no one has a record uh, in our in our tournament, which is our heavyweight tournament, a one night tournament. We got Mark Godbeer, we got Mighty Mo, we got Jack May, we got Romero Sokolju, and there's only one guy in this tournament that has bare knuckle experience. One. So every one of these other guys are going in O and O, even though they have got tremendous records right. in the world of MMA and boxing and kickboxing. So it is what it was in the beginning with the old no holds barred where guys are coming in and they can come from these old disciplines and be very good at it, but they're O and O. Right. And so bare knuckle is something I'm interested in watching to see what translates the best. Is it MMA? Is it boxing? Is it kickboxing? Who is going to translate over well into bare knuckle fighting? Uh, it's de- it's definitely going to be uh, going to be interesting to see who's going to um, uh, make that transition into um, uh, fighting in the style bare knuckle. Um, the the question I have also is I went back through your audio uh, your autobiography Inside the Lions Den uh, Life and Submission Fighting System of Ken Shamrock, which is a great book by the way. Um, I read back in the days of the UFC, back you know when uh, a lot of people were trying to regulate and said it was brutality. They didn't want it in certain states like Nevada, uh, New York. Of course, is still not allowing it. Um, have you run up into any opposition against that, trying to regulate this and stop you guys from having this kind of competition? Well, like I said in the early days, I was the face of the organization and I dealt with that. Right. Oh, yeah, so it, it it is what people don't understand that scares them, and I think that we have the opportunity to be able to educate them. Um, and whereas in the beginning days, nobody cared to do that. They just did the show and they said, like it or don't like it, but we're doing it. Right. So there was a lot of pushback, but I think because we know a lot more now and we know the right way to do things that we just need to be able to put something out there that's professional, that was well run. So that people have an understanding and, and be able to educate them on what it is they're watching. And then it'll be much easier for them to be able to accept it or reject it. Cause you don't want to force anybody to do anything, but at least have the opportunity to watch it or not watch it. That's their, that's a prerogative. So we think that we have the opportunity to be able to educate people, have them understand what it is we're doing and be able to put on a very, very, well professional run organization with high level caliber fighters in the pit. Roger, um, it's definitely going to be. Uh, it's definitely good that we're educating the public. And let's uh, let's talk for safety for a moment because uh, you were there back in the day. You uh, fought when you saw bare knuckle fight. You fought bare knuckle before. Um, uh, going through your book, you know, there was a lot of uh, talk about we're trying to make sports safer. The emphasis is on safety now, and it's affecting every combat sport. It's affecting pro football and things. Um, but one of the things you pointed out is the fact that because boxers or you know, you put you put uh, gloves on a fighter. Um, it encourages fighters to take more hits, and people think it's safer, so they're willing to you know just to take more punishment, and that ultimately will uh, injure them. Uh, injure them in the long run. And you think by actually taking the gloves off, it might limit people and it might make them, you know, not want to um, uh, continue to get hit. Oh, there's no question because the effectiveness of the strikes uh, are going to be what they are. When you hit the target, Mm-hmm. It is effective as opposed to putting a four ounce glove on somebody or a, or an eight ounce or whatever glove and you hit somebody. You, I mean, it was like myself. You could hit me with a, a sledgehammer and I'm going to keep coming. That's right? true. <laughs> so the thing is, is now you got these tough guys. When you put a, some pads on their hand, you're not going to put them down. No. So they're going to take a whole lot of, of punishment. And in return, that causes brain damage. So I believe that bare knuckle because of what it is and its own breed, that when it does, it's fast, it's quick, and the fight's finished. And the reason why is because when you land a punch, it counts, you will go down. As right. opposed to being so tough that you could take a punch that you just keep coming and you take multiple shots to the head and then you end up dying. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, you go, and uh, this also, um, uh, bare knuckle, I mean, I can hear a lot of layman people out there who probably don't watch combat sports, might have a very narrow opinion of it. I can hear them all saying, like, like, uh, well, you know, the glove is better to have protection, but also when you got gloves on, you know, you got wraps underneath there, It's uh, it does have an emphasis to allow people to cheat. People can take padding out of gloves, people can, you know, um, uh, put, you know, hardening agents on the wraps underneath the gloves, and it can lead to, uh, can lead to severe damage. We've seen that in fights. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there's, even when there's no cheating, 
competing, you can still have people get hurt in the ring. You know, we had that with Ray Mancini against Dooku Kim. There was the fight uh, back in the 80s where the fighter had the uh, glove stripped, uh, the padding stripped out of his gloves. Um, but uh, on, on brain damage, uh, that's a big issue right now. A uh, lot of lawsuits going on. Um, You've been you fought for a long time. I know you've uh, you're out of you're out of active fighting, but do you worry about your long range health and about how many blows you took? Uh, not just as a as a professional fighter, but also in the in the world of pro wrestling. No, I think I've taken care of myself pretty well. You know, I mean, I, I literally took guys down and, uh, and 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 tried to stay away from the the multiple strikes. Although I I struck well, I fought Muay Thai, so I did take some strikes. But I thought I took care of myself pretty well. Um, but here's the thing: it's not it's not about how hard the glove is not about how hard the hand is. It's about how many times your brain bounces off inside of your head. Because I even know soccer players that had concussions because of the repeated taking headers, uh, when the ball's kicked from the corner and they repeatedly keep taking headers and the ball is soft, but because it's still hitting the head and it's bouncing the brain off in there, you're, you're seeing soccer players come up with some brain damage. So, that's why I think these people that have a narrow-minded way of thinking need to be educated on what they're saying before they say it because they have to understand that it isn't about how hard the item is on the outside. It's about how many times that that item is hitting on the outside and mm. causing that brain to bounce off inside the head. It causes that long-term damage, like forgetting who your mother is or your wife is or your kids is, as opposed to taking broken noses and scar tissue from bleeding. Right. Right. Um, with this, uh, with this launch of, with launch of bare knuckle and the, um, uh, the, uh, the being the new kid on the block, uh, has this been, uh, has this, has this been a challenge for you to actually, um, uh, start this up and to get this, um, get people interested in the sport or is it made easier because, you know, you're associated with it and people are like, Hey, Ken Shamrock's starting this. So more people are wanting to follow it. Yeah, I, I think that there's definitely a, a name brand to it, and, but I also believe that the content, which is bare knuckle. Uh, is what people want to watch. I mean, I remember back in the early days, everybody kept saying, stand them up, stand them up. They still say it today, stand them up. Yep. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stand them up. And we're going to give the fans what they've been wanting ever since that no holes barred had come out, bare knuckle, stand them up. So that's what we're going to do September 21st at Four Bears Casino. Um, we're going to stand them up. Uh, no no doubt about it. Um, let me uh, let me uh, get your impression on a couple other things that have been going on in the world of combat sports. Um, uh, what do you make of uh, the situation going on right now with uh, Conor McGregor and the uh, spat he got into in that Irish pub? What do you what do you think about all that? Uh, it's a shame because Conor has had such a, a tremendous career. He's a tremendous fighter, uh, and it's a shame when you see guys that can't control themselves outside the ring. And uh, it's just, I mean, I mean, obviously, I understand that that. Connor doesn't do things just for nothing. I mean, I'm sure the guy did something. Sure. But you have to have you have to have control. You got to know who you are, and you got to know that people are going to taunt you. And Connor's going to have to know that even more now because of his reputation. People are going to be looking for handouts, so they're going to get themselves in trouble with him. He's going to have to pay them off. And so Connor needs to make sure that he starts looking at himself as a professional athlete, start treating himself like that, so that he can have a long and lustrous life after fighting no absolutely i'm uh would that be your would that be your uh, what advice would you give him would you just be like hey man just stay out of this you know watch yourself you know try to control your temper a little bit what, what would you say to him i would say well if you have that much money and you're doing all these things so well hire yourself some bodyguards so that nobody gets near you enough to be able to taunt you to get you to do something like that. Have people around you that know that you do not touch anybody and that you have people around you that you know will be able to do, grab you, pick you up, move you from situations that's going to get you in trouble. That'd be, that'd be that'd be a smart choice. It's a uh, if Connor here if Connor hears this, then uh, he definitely needs to uh, heed your advice. Um, but uh, moving on from Conor McGregor, uh, you see him, uh, people that have uh, kind of moved away. They sort of uh, followed your followed your trend, you and Dan Severn and others, guys that have uh, gone from uh, professional fighting into the world of sports entertainment, pro wrestling. You look at Brock Lesnar, you look at Ronda Rousey. Um, what do you think about their success and about the? Um, and would you think either one of them might ever become a bare knuckle fighter? I mean, it's there. That's why I say that bare knuckle is so young that everybody's, except for maybe 1%, they're all O and O. 
So I think it's such so young and such a young sport now that crossover is is very very easy for anybody that's a tough person that can fight. And I think that it, the door is wide open for them to step in and give it a shot. Now, would you be would you uh, want to see that? I would love to see wrestlers crossover because I've got because I was in it and I know there's a lot of tough dudes in wrestling. Um, a lot of talented dudes in wrestling. And uh, I think uh, there's, there's also a lot of pro football players that can fight, um, you know, and there's, uh, I, and the, the, the most, I think, intriguing thing to me hmm. is the MMA world, the boxing world, the kickboxing world. Can the guys that are so great, can they transition over into bare knuckle? That to me is the interesting part. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely going to be the uh, test of time. It's like, well, we'll know how good they're going to be once they uh, step into the ring. Now, are they going to be fighting? Uh, this will be fought in a ring, or will we fought in a cage? No, we have a special uh, thing that we're going to actually uh, announce the the, the 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 night of the fight. Where we're going to let people see what it is we're doing, and it's going to be a tremendous experience for fans who are there live or on TV to be able to watch fights like they've never watched them before. Oh, that's uh, that's amazing. Um, uh, so the so the fan experience is going to be something that has not been uh, broached before in combat sports. No, like I said, we're and we've we've already done it. We've basically allowed the fans to vote on our first round of the heavyweight tournament on who they want to fight one another. So we really want the fans to feel like they're they're engaged with us and that this is their event. Oh, no, definitely, definitely. Uh, letting the vote, letting the vote on that is going to be um, a great way to keep fans uh, engaged. Um, with all the talk about you starting this and being involved here, um, and with your tremendous record, uh, is there any chance we'll ever see you fight in this? Um, no, I, you know, I'm the president, and um, that's where I belong. Um, obviously, my hunger to do it is there. My desire to do it is there. Uh, but you know, I signed on as the president and owner, um, of, uh, Valor BK. And so that's where I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay in the box and, and do my job. Gotcha. Gotcha. The role of the president definitely needs to, um, uh, needs to take precedent of actually being in there and being a competitor because it's not going to be an easy job. Um, let's, let's talk about the role of being the president. So, uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of fighters or tough people are you trying to bring in into this? Because one of the problems that, you know, people have in combat sports is like, you see, like, you know, when the UFC brought in people like war machine who had, uh, real bad criminal records and are now back in jail. And that can kind of give a stigma to the sport. Don't you think, are you trying to avoid people with, you know, past like what war machine had? And, um, what are you going to do if you have people that, uh, you know, can do things outside of the ring that might, uh, jeopardize uh, valor BK? Well, here's the thing. I, I have always respected um, my environment. I respect fighters, even though I may go after them beforehand, but after it's over, I respect them. I try to put differences behind it. I want our event, Valor, the name Valor, to have honor and courage. People go in there and they fight with honor and courage and they walk out and they have respect for one another. They may not like each other and they may not get along with each other, but they're going to respect what they do. And uh, people that, that don't follow or toe the line, we have a strict line of rules. And if you break those rules, you will be punished. And you're only going to get so many chances before you're gone. It's not going to be like these other people where they constantly keep bringing guys in that because they need ticket sales and they need pay-per-view uh, sales. Um, I'm not – I, me personally, is I'm not going to do it. I, I mean, I won't do it. I'll, I'll go against – our board, if I have to, if if we if they, that starts to go that way, because to me it's about keeping what we love pure and clean and respectful. No, that's a that's a that's a bold uh, that's a bold uh, decision there. Nothing uh, nothing wrong with it. My hats off to you for for doing that and respecting. But let's talk about let's uh, talk about some of the other athletes. So, you know, there's been a lot of talk with them uh, people, especially in fighting. If you listen to folks like Joe Rogan talking about the uh, the transgender athletes that are coming in and like you know people that are biologically male but are coming in fighting in uh, women's mixed martial arts. Uh, um, where do you stand on uh, on these transgender athletes getting involved into combat sports? And uh, would would you allow any of them to compete in this? Well, I don't have a stand on it, but I have an opinion on it. I, okay. Me personally, I think when when uh, somebody does a transgender and they then want to fight in a women's division 
or a men's division, I think it's a, a disadvantage. I think in both ways. I mean, you, you're you're talking about a woman wanting to be a man, and then she wants to fight in the men's division, right? Well, that's right. the disadvantage because she's not going to be developed like men, as opposed to a uh, man wanting to be a woman. Now that man has an advantage, even right. though they've done the change. But there's an advantage, and I think women can get seriously hurt. Uh, when that happens, and again, it's just my opinion. I could be way off base. I don't know. I don't know the medical things on that. I don't understand it, but, but, but I do. That's just the opinion I have. And, and uh, can it be changed? Of course it can. If I see things uh, out there that are making it look like it's a lot fair and that things aren't going to, you know, blow out of control and get somebody seriously hurt, then yeah, I'm okay with that. But right now where I stand, I think it's dangerous. Sure. Sure. Um, it's, it's, that definitely is a, that's definitely something that uh, we're still trying to um, uh, figure out. We're trying to make our way through this whole process with uh, transgender athletes now coming in and uh, competing one-on-one. Um, while I got you, I know I only got you for, for a little while longer. I'm, uh, I'd like to get your assessment of uh, some people that you've uh, gone up against, um, both in the world of pro wrestling and in the world of mixed martial arts, and some guys you may not have fought against, but uh, I'm sure you're well aware of them. And I'll start off with a guy you fought multiple times, uh, Dan Severn. What do you think of him? I mean, I've always liked the guy, but I also think that you know, in the, you know, obviously this last year, a couple of years, he's been talking a lot about me. And uh, I've heard so, it. So, yeah, and I, I don't understand why, but um, okay. But yeah, so a little bit disappointed in the way that he's, act, he's acted towards me since neither one of us are fighting. Right. Yeah, we're uh, he's going to be. I'm going to be having an interview with him later this year, so I intend to ask him about all that that, that beef with you. But, uh, um, uh, your thoughts on uh, your thoughts on uh, Ronda Rousey? Um, I thought she was tremendous. I thought she brought in, and along with um, Carano, that they they literally brought in the women's fighting. They they ushered it in, and she did a tremendous job. But I also think that um, after she got beat, she folded. It was mm-hmm. almost like she couldn't come back from that. And I thought she made a smart move, whereas she didn't try to come back and fight when she knew that she had. She just didn't have the desire to do that. Mm-hmm. And she went into pro wrestling, and I thought she did a tremendous job in pro wrestling. She made the right decision because if she would have kept trying to go do what she was doing with with not having that desire to do it, I think it would have ended badly for her. So hats off to her. She made the good decision, um, and she's doing a tremendous job. So I wish her nothing but the best. Awesome. Uh, Bob Sapp. Beast. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, uh, unfortunately, size isn't. Uh, the answer in in being tough obviously <laughs> you know so uh, but he's a big dude he's a character he's fun to be around so uh i like him i think he's i wish i would have gotten to know him more because like i said he's a big dude but he's funny oh yeah he's, he's got a he's got a great personality you see him in interviews all the time he's a he's definitely a hoot I, hopefully we'll get him on here someday um uh your uh, your thoughts on uh on um the rock Oh, wow. Charismatic. Um, uh, well, just a one-time talent. Uh, Vince McMahon. All business, man. Like, uh, all business, man. There's no friendship. Just business. Just business. I got you there. Yeah. Um, do you th- do you think that uh, do you think that um, you'll ever uh, go back to um, uh, the sports entertainment route? Uh, like any chance we might see you maybe inducted in WWE Hall of Fame or um, uh, compete in a WWE ring again? Well, I mean, I would never say never. You know, I mean, I'm in pro wrestling now. I've got a lot of big things happening right now with pro wrestling. So you never say never. I know right now. I hope that somewhere in the near future that I get an opportunity to be, uh, you know, at least uh, mentioned, and then hopefully soon be inducted. Uh, if there's anyone that des- anyone that deserves it, it's definitely you. You know, 1998 King of the Ring, Intercontinental Champion. You've wrestled everybody in the company. Uh, you no, know, you definitely were a draw. I don't understand what's uh, what's the holdup. So anybody out there, you know, start go to your social media, go to Twitter, go to Instagram. Let's try to get Ken Shamrock in the WWE Hall of Fame where he belongs. Okay, let's get that done because this man definitely definitely deserves it. Um, so just a just a couple more questions for you here, Ken. And I'll let you go. Um, do you um uh, do you um uh, how long do you plan on uh, continuing uh, with uh, Valor BK? Are you are you going to be the president for until um uh, you don't want to be president anymore, or um, do you think that uh, do you think that you'll have this for the rest of your life? Oh, there's no doubt. I think we'll do it as long as we can. 
Um, and as long as the market bears it, you know, um, mm-hmm. then we'll keep running with it. I think we're going to build this thing up. And I think we're just in the beginning stages. And I, I think at least 10, 15 years, uh, this thing's going to, I believe that's going to take over the combat world. Uh, it definitely has the, it definitely has the potential. Um, uh, are any, are any fighters that you've trained or are any of them going to be uh, competitors in this? No, not on the first one. Uh, not on the first, first one. one here, yeah. Richard uh, Goodman put this card together. Uh, he did a tremendous job on doing that. So uh, we're looking forward to this card. We're looking forward to the September 21st at Four Bears Casino. Uh, put this show on. I also want to mention the co-main event, Issy Smith, who's yeah. a boxer. That's yeah, what I'm MMA guy. Yeah. To me, that one there also has a sneaker of being a, a show stealer because you have a pro boxer, uh, pro world champion boxer. Oh yeah. Uh, that's that's going to go into bare knuckle, right? It's his first fight, so he's going to walk in with a record of forty five and ten or whatever he was in his in his pro boxing day uh, career, and he's walking into bare knuckle and he's zero and zero. Yeah. Uh, along with Esteban Payan, who has a tremendous record too, and he's zero and zero. So these guys are going in. Uh, with these tremendous records and like and they're going against MMA against boxing and bare knuckle, which one's going to transition the best? That's that's that that is going to take a while to see, and we'll see what happens on uh, September twenty first. Um, but we've seen guys, you know, that tried. You know, we see, you know, we saw, you know, James Tony, you know, tried to go into the UFC, chase Dana White all over the country, and then he finally gets in his first fight with Randy Couture. He's out in like in like thirty seconds. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be challenging. But this the bare, Valor bare knuckle is not the UFC, this is going to be a much different beast to tackle. And this is going to be something that's going to be very special for all the fans. And um, it's going to be great for the Four Bears Casino that's going to be hosting this on September 21st. It's going to be great for all the fans that are there in person and for everybody that's going to be on uh, pay-per-view. And it's going to be something that's going to hopefully revolutionize um, the uh, the world of combat sports. And it's uh, definitely going to um, uh, keep uh, people talking about the, um, uh, the great Ken Shamrock, the world's dangerous man. Uh, Ken, I've just just uh, got to say that uh, it's been a real pleasure to have you here on the show and to get this opportunity to um, uh, talk to you. I know you you got uh, some other interviews uh, you got to do. So uh, once again, I really, truly appreciate you coming on here, and uh, I hope you'll uh, you'll come back on again and we can have a longer conversation, man. Hey, I'd love to. Once we get into our fourth or fifth show, man, we can talk about it. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. I uh, got your contact information, and uh, we'll get you back here. So uh, so good luck. Um, good luck with the card, and uh, we'll talk to you again, man. And everybody, this has been uh, Ken Shamrock, the world's dangerous man, and he's right here on the Free Speech Zone. I'm Eric Barnard, and uh, Ken, we'll talk to you later, man. Take care. I appreciate you. Appreciate it. All right, everyone, and thank you all for um, uh, joining me here on the Free Speech Zone. This was a great show today. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, remember, uh, future guests are going to be upcoming throughout the rest of this year. So if you want to find out who our next guest is, please, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm uh, My Twitter handle is at Eric, Barn- Eric underscore Barnard 4. Remember, that is at Eric underscore Barnard 4. You can also follow me on Instagram at Eric Ryan Barnard. And remember, this is the Free Speech Zone, and the Free Speech Zone comes to you from Atlanta, Georgia. And I want to give a shout out to um, uh, the Constitute Voice. Uh, the Constitute Voice, uh, you can find them at www.constitutevoice.com. The Constitute Voice promotes free thought, radical honesty, and common sense. If it uh, weren't for them, I wouldn't be here uh, helping to get so many of these great guests to come talk to you. This has been uh, Eric Barnard. This is the Free Speech Zone, and I'll see you next time.